and we have saved the cows. <laughs> so let me turn the camera around. So thank you, kia ora, and welcome. Welcome to HAPS, and thank you for joining. So g'day, Blaine, here we go, we're in Cornwall Park. Whoa! Oh, <laughs> we've got one right here. <laughs> Our cows have been saved. Whoa. Blaine, thank you so much. JP, here's our beautiful Simmental cattle. And these are amazing. And we love them very much. But sometimes we export them. Leonard, fantastic. Kia ora. Sometimes we export them. And because they are in high demand, because they're such um, premium prime, yeah, they're prime beasts. And the way they're farmed here is really, really amazing. So they're in hot demand. <laughs> in such hot demand that they have been exported overseas. Oh, you're, oh JP, we've been exporting these beautiful Simmental um, cattle. Karen, awesome. We've been exporting them. And yesterday or today, they've just announced they are not going to send 17 of them to Mongolia. So they send them to Mongolia to use as part of a breeding program. Last year, I think it was last year, there was a huge container ship full of thousands of um, animals from New Zealand actually um, sunk off the coast of China. And about 42 crew on the boat were... Oh, where is he? <laughs> About 42 crew on the boat um, were killed as well as all the animals on board. So it's it raised a public outcry. There's been a lot of opposition to this live livestock export. And included in that um, are these beautiful animals here in Cornwall Park, which is a city farm. <laughs> are we going to be able to touch them? <laughs> Hello. Whoa. This is how close I am. Hello, hello. Hello. Oh, you're beautiful. You're number 908. And you've got Cornwall Park written on there as well. Whoa. Aren't they gorgeous? So they would be shipped over on these huge big container ships, which have got a lot of fresh air going through them. But the animals are all in crates on them. So it's not ideal. And not ideal at all. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Because Simmental are amazing because they're not only <laughs> they're not only good for eating, um, they also pr produce really, really, really good milk. So that's amazing. That's really, really good. Yeah, fantastic. So I'm going to take you for a little walk through Cornwall Park. Marcia, awesome. Nice to see you. We've just been looking at the cows. I've just been saying we've saved some of them from leaving New Zealand because often they um, are live exports. And yeah, we've got one. So you can see what it's like here. There's actually no, there's just this wall. This is known as a ha ha wall. And this is the only um, barrier really between me and the animals. We are allowed to walk in amongst them, that's fine. But there's actually no point today because it's nice to get a view from here. But it is lovely. You can walk through and, yeah, you can do whatever. They're quite used to people because lots of families come here. And that was another reason why the park decided not to do the live exports. Marcia, thank you so much. Why they decided not to do... Come on, have a look at Marcia. Come on. <laughs> Your own special cow, Marcia. Yes. Hello. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, stick to the kiwi, yeah. Um, and, uh, hello. <laughs> you can one of those up close, you? No, look, it's so big, much bigger than you are. <laughs> you love them, yeah. I love cows too, I love them. I was actually brought up on a dairy farm, so I've got a little bit of an affinity with these beautiful animals. But they're very used to people, and they're used to dogs. Very excited though, puppy. <laughs> um, but this is more than 400 acres of land here and it's really, really amazing. And the sheep and cattle and beautiful trees and gardens. We'll say goodbye to Marcia and then we're going to keep, keep
keep walking. <laughs> Here we are. Say goodbye. No. No. Yes, yes, yes. I don't want to fall in. <laughs> yeah, they're ready. This is, they're so well looked after here. Oh, good girl. Good girl. They're so well looked after here, which is really, really amazing. <laughs> they love music. They do in the cow shed. Yes, Dad used to play, um, have the radio going to them because he reckoned they liked Elvis Presley. <laughs> um, walking along with us. It's pretty cool. So um, what was I saying? Oh, yes, because this is a gorgeous park. It's a huge park. It's more than 400 acres. I think it's about 430 acres. And people come here and walk their dogs and walk their children and have picnics. And there's barbecues here for people to use. G'day, Dan. How's it going? So <laughs> people here. Oh, yes. You're going to talk to us now. <laughs> um, yeah, so that was that was a communication from one, one across here called out to that one. Um, yeah, so people that live... Oh, we've got mushrooms growing as well. Look, Ooh, because we've had warm weather and rain, we've got little mushrooms, or they could be toadstools. Probably toadstools, I'd say. Yeah, toadstools. Look at that. Can't eat them. <laughs> the tree with the white blooms is gorgeous. Um, oh, suddenly windy. This one, white blooms. I can't see any white blooms. Oh, this one here. Yes, yeah, 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 sort of like a smoke tree. They're all starting to talk. Oh, here we go. <laughs> Shazam, awesome. Yeah, so what I'm trying to say is the people that live around here <laughs> tend to look on these um, animals as their pets. And so they become very, very attached to them. So when they found out that these were going to be, some of them was going to be sent off to Man Mongolia, that was another reason why people began to um, protest. Whoa. Yes, so it looks like some, I don't know what it is. I don't know what it is. But it's actually, they're not blooms, it's just the colour. Anyway, we're going to get round here. I'm going to not only show you some cows, but we're going to cross over and have a look at some New Zealand sheep as well. Blueberry, how's it going there in Tucson? Let's have a look at some city cows. I'm about 15 minutes from downtown Auckland. So when I was doing my tours, of course, a drive and a stop in Cornwall Park was always a good idea. They're pretty amazing. So there's simmentels and very, very, very beautiful animals. Very beautiful. I don't know how much each one would be. A couple of thousand dollars maybe. Uh, could even be more because these also get sold to farmers around New Zealand um, for their herds, so to keep up their breeding programs and keep up the the good quality of, of the animals. Whoa, here we are. We, yeah, we had heavy, heavy rain yesterday. Yesterday was crazy. We had sunshine. Oh, the little birds flying off too. Yesterday we had sunshine, we had a thunderstorm. Uh, oh, it was just crazy. There they all go. <laughs> this is funny because they're all calling out to this one here, to Marcia's one. They're all calling out. So off she goes. Here they are. I love it. <laughs> it's fun, isn't it? I love the way things happen. It's unplanned. They could have all moved off in the other direction. But no, they just waited right here. Now I've got a wooden fence between me and them, which is, works quite well. Yeah, so we're 15 minutes from downtown Auckland, which is really... <laughs> which is really fantastic because it gives city kids a real taste of the farm. This is a, oh no, I thought it was a bull. It's not a bull. They're big. They're really big. You can see how beautiful they are. Big and beefy. 
This is not your McDonald's beef though. We export a lot of our beef to McDonald's for um, hamburgers, for Big Macs. Flies are bothering them. That's why they've got their tails on the move. Yeah, the boss or the bully, yes. That is not a volcano there. When they were building the ha-ha wall, all the um, soil that they excavated, they built a little mini volcano with it. So that's cute in springtime because it's got lambs all jumping around over the top of it and it's really, really lovely. I have not been into Cornwall Park for a long time. And the reason I'm here today is I came to the car wash. I came over here to the car wash and it's too busy. So I thought, ah, oh, I'm going to go to Cornwall Park. So I came over here and I thought, wow, well, I'm just going to share all of this gorgeous, the gorgeous animals with you. And very timely because um, of the, Mike, fantastic, how's it going? Very timely because of the, these were due for export live export and it's been cancelled. So we're all very happy. So they've all turned their backs on us. So I think it's time to walk across under the gorgeous trees. Have a look at some sheep. How's it going there, Mike? How's Seattle today? We're, ch we're a bit changeable with the weather. I've actually been doing one of my buy me a coffee walking tours this morning and I've actually decided I love doing these 30 minute walking tours. It's a little bit like um, doing a haps like this, but I just have two or three people on, and we just we did the Auckland University today. It was really good, and yeah, I'm going to try and yeah do a few more of those as well because it helps to bring in the coffee. <laughs> so walking under in this gorgeous avenue of oak trees, lots and lots of acorns. You've got a park with goats. Oh. I love baby goats are my favourite. They're much better than lambs, actually. I love baby goats. When I was a kid, we had always had pet goats as, as well. And they were funny. Because I grew up on a farm in the volcanic rocks here. Yeah. Cool, 17. I think we're about 20, 21-ish, maybe. It's still pretty humid. That's why we're getting these toadstools and mushrooms popping up everywhere. Yes, but one day I came home from um, from school and opened the door and went into the house and the goat was, I could hear somebody playing the piano <laughs> and the goat was walking up and down on the piano keys. <laughs> it was always escaping. And it ate the clothes off the clothesline. Oh, it was a terrible goat. <laughs> Just walking over to, yeah, it was a bad goat though. Among all the pets that we had, I think the goat was the naughtiest. Sorry, I've just, let's have a look at the avenue here. This is gorgeous. In the springtime, this is all close to traffic. And it's all the spring daffodils and jonquils and bluebells and freesias are all blooming here under the tree. It's really gorgeous. Yes, Karen, yeah. You grow up on a farm, you've always got lots of good animal stories. Yeah. And um, but I've lived in the city for I've actually lived in the city really since I was 13 because I lived in a really remote part of the country where there were no no high schools. So I got sent to boarding school here in Auckland. Beyond those trees there is Mangakiki or One Tree Hill Volcano. I'll zoom in because you can see the obelisk that's on the top there. Whoops, <laughs> there's the obelisk. That's the very top of the volcano there. And at the base of that, and I need to walk up there and show it to you sometime. At the base, you can't see him, there is a beautiful statue of Coupe. Yeah, the trees are gorgeous here. Trees are really, really gorgeous. So Coupe was the first Maori to discover New Zealand in 950. And yeah, it was good. Kia ora. <laughs> Everybody's out for a walk. <laughs> Bicycling, walking. Yeah, the trees are amazing. 
So these were planted by Sir John Logan Campbell. So this was originally his land and he gifted it all to the people of New Zealand. So he planted these trees here. Yeah, Vanita, awesome. Yeah. And he planted these trees and, oh, it's a long story, but we'll do a bit more about him another day. And he did a little bit of experimental forestry here with native trees as well, which is good. Yeah. Nice to see you, Vanita. Yeah. G'day, Bruce. <laughs> How's it going there, Bruce? That's a good Kiwi name. <laughs> there we go. Sheep. Hello. So there's lots of fantastic birds in here. In fact, Cornwall Park in the old days actually had um, a golf course. And yeah, so you would have been playing golf around here and teeing off from the top of the volcano. Oh, hi, Bruce. Kia ora, Bruce. <laughs> Did I not say the right one? Tēnā <laughs> koe it's not a Kiwi person, though. <laughs> Hello. Hi. They're busy. I'll tell you what. There's one thing about sheep. They never stop eating. They never stop eating. So they're used to people and they're used to dogs. But if you bring a dog in here, yeah. There's a couple of nice cafes in the park too, um, Marcia, because um, they're trying to, you know, make a bit of money as well because Sir John Logan Campbell left this to the people of New Zealand on the condition that everything within the park, that it would always remain free to people to use. So it's run by trustees now and hello. It's run by trustees and... Um, yeah, so there's a couple of cafes and a little event space, so that makes a little bit of extra money on the side, which is good. It costs a fortune to keep a park like this in good condition. I think they have like 24 full time. No, that's right, Karen, yeah, they're right here. Yeah, so it's divided into two, as you can see. So the farm part is behind the fence, and then talking about mowing lawns, this is, this is the park part, so this has to be mowed. Yeah. <laughs> so you can see how nice and tidy this is. And then over the fence, it looks like this. <laughs> I've had lots of really good adventures in this park when I've been scoping. And, you know, it's been fun. Once they were um, rounding up all the sheep and they were running them past me. And, you know, it was, it's been really amazing. I've been lucky. So... I think I've done sheep shearing here once, happened to be driving through and they were shearing the sheep. Yeah. But, oh, birds. Yeah. But these are the lovely foresty things. These were, so we've got totara trees here, totara. And yeah, so, and these are plant, sort of like experimental planted forests. Yeah. You have, JP, I haven't been here for a while. The last time I came, I think, here's one of the staff here coming through. The last time I came here, I was for the cherry blossoms. And I scoped Maria, the Tai Chi girl. Yeah, the Tai Chi. The, they look ancient, but they were planted probably around the 1850s. And they would have been small trees then. Yeah. Oh, so, yeah, we've got a totara here. What's this? Oh, yeah, these are all totara. Yeah. So these were really good for canoes. Yeah, they're gorgeous. And we've got kauri in here and rimu. Um, and they're all planted sort of like in groups. Shall I keep walking? Let's go through the trees. Ah, yes, let's go for a walk. <laughs> the car wash can wait. I have never walked you through here, and it's saying it's a great signal. And I think last time I tried to walk through here, it wasn't. Yeah. Yes. Yes, let's walk. <laughs> we love a good walk. And you'll hear some birds. Yes. <laughs> Oh, 
it's really lovely in here and they're quite high so it's a real canopy Oh, look at bird photography. Oh, lovely, beautiful. Yeah, it's quite, oh, we've got rosellas. So rosellas are very colourful birds um, that blew over. They've blown over from Australia and they've settled here. So I just saw three of them. Your daughter would love New Zealand then. Really love it. Everything's a work of art. Which way are we going? I could be lost. <laughs> oh. After the rain. Look, they're gorgeous. Look at them. Wow. They're obviously toadstools, I'd say. Yeah. It's really peaceful. It's lovely. Must be getting late for you there, JP. <laughs> okay, I'm just going to walk through here. Sorry, I didn't bring my gimbal with me. So I hope we're not too... Too, too, too bumpy. Started using my gimbal a lot more. Can you hear the birds? This is a Rimu. Rimu has really, it's very spiky. Hard to show it to you. Here's the Tilly's. Oh, 9.30 in New York. Okay. That's not bad. That's not bad. Here's the twoies. And then we're going to be coming out of the trees. I'm going to walk you over. I'm going to show you. We're going to walk. We're just going to walk up this way. Nice and steady. Oh, good, 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 good. Just looking up to the volcano there. It's hidden by the trees. It's about 186 meters high. Is that like 270 odd feet, I think? Yeah. That's, okay, I'm going to show you something a little bit special. That's what we're walking for now. Show you something a little bit special, which is Sir John Logan Campbell's house. <laughs> and if I'm not lost, we should be able to come out of these trees and we'll be there. <laughs> Looking back at the trees from this side. But yes, I went to the car wash. My because you know I have a van for doing my tours. And I had not it hasn't been washed for a year. I could have had no work. <laughs> so it, and I've hardly driven it for a year. So we're off to the car wash today because I've got some friends arriving from Wellington next week um, and we're doing some stuff in my car and then I've got a little tour um, heading down to Waitomo, Hobbiton and Rotorua um, the week after so I thought I'd get ready. It's filthy, I tell you it's really filthy. I've only used it really to go out to the gannets and back. So it's got a lot of probably beachy stuff on it. Okay, bit of a climb here, as you can see, but that's okay. Oh, just get catch my breath. That looks like a big magnolia, big something or other. I don't know. Looks like a magnolia, but I don't think it is. Red R, fabulous. Yeah, I'm working on a few um, things, JP. Uh, people, I'm looking, I've got, 
I've got a tour booked with some Australian people in September and I've got two other tours booked with Americans but may not happen. They seem to think it's okay we're going to open up on the 1st of January but we haven't been told that. But um, they can cancel, you know, that's fine because, yeah. Um, verified user thank you so much and I'm just working with somebody for the end of January for a big tour big five-day tour so which would be nice if it happens but we're at that stage where people are planning and the planning is part of the most exciting in the little car park here planning is I reckon the, the best part of travel <laughs> Doing all your research, finding everything out, organising hotels. That's really, really great. So I'm at that stage with these people, 10 people um, from California. Be nice if it happens, but um, who knows? Who knows? Yes, the grass is really green. We've had a little bit of rain lately. It's nice grass as well. Looking up here, we've got a huge Bahuda Kaaba tree. So that's a New Zealand Christmas tree. You can see sort of what the weather's like. It's pretty amazing today. I've had the most beautiful... See that cloud there? I'll zoom in on it because that's been hanging around. And it's that one there. It's amazing. It's right in front of all the other clouds. And it's really gorgeous. It's probably full of rain, <laughs> which it's going to drop on somebody. But it's really, really, really fantastic. These are some of the buildings in the park. So this is, so we've gone from cows to a completely different topic now. It was going to be a little short cow scope. So this is a bistro here restaurant and they have events and they have a little ice cream shop there as well on the side and then behind the tree is Huia Lodge which was Sir John Logan Campbell was a house a building that he erected and used to entertain he and Mrs Campbell entertained there so that was actually built in the park but what I wanted to show you was mashed potatoes yeah that's what Actually, that's what that one looks like. Yeah. See, the sky's changing already. This is what I wanted to show you, though, is this little house. So this was Sir John Logan Campbell's house. And he built this, I think, in 1841 or 1842. It was, it's been moved here. It fell into disrepair. And it sat down on, in Auckland. And the only reason they, they saved it was because it had been his house. Otherwise, it would have just been demolished. But it's really cute. And it's been completely restored. Oh, thank you, Don. Awesome. Thank you so much. So it's been completely restored, and I'm going to take you for a walk through it. First of all, we'll just have a look at Huia Lodge. Here we go. Huia Lodge is now a information centre, and they have a little interactive um, area where you can watch movies and you, or, his, the movies the history of the area it's really good and they've got all sorts of information in there it's really it's a gorgeous I think it was built 19, 1905 or something maybe the park is actually named after the Duke and Duchess of Cornwall who visited here around that time so it may have been built for their visit but Arcacia Cottage here we go we're going for a walk inside Oh, that just tells you when it's open and closed. Here is Sir John Logan Campbell here, standing in the doorway. He was actually a Scottish doctor that came to New Zealand. He had been working in Sydney, and he heard he could make a lot of money here. So he didn't come to practice medicine. He came to make the money. <laughs> yeah, it's gorgeous. It's called Acacia Cottage. Oh, and they've got a sensory and medicinal garden here. Nice. Let's go for a wander through and see where he and Mrs. Campbell live with their three children, I think. Whoa. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> Melissa, 
Oh, fantastic. How's it going? So there's a glass. Um, it's all built of beautiful Cory wood. So this would have been sent down, sent up from the, uh, oh, there we go. <laughs> this would have been sent up from, I think, Samaroa maybe, uh, or down, I should say. So it would have been shipped down here for the building. Look at the size of the bed. Can you believe it's hardly more than a single bed? <laughs> I look like a ghost. Ah, yes, I've come back. <laughs> Mel, fabulous, thank you. Oh, nice to see you. We're just having a little wander through Sir John Logan Campbell's house now. Hello. <laughs> and we'll keep going. Mel, thank you so much. <laughs> Got visitors today. <laughs> The dining room and little wooden high chair here. We call this a high chair in New Zealand. I think um, in baby chair it's called in Japan. So that's the high chair. What they've got. Um, gorgeous though, look. It's got wheels on the bottom, so they would have wheeled it around. No kitchen or bathroom. There we go. We've got the old old pots there. You called a high chair? Okay, cool. Yeah. Hi, chair. Okay, good. Yeah. I know because when I've been in Japan, I've 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 said something about the high chair, and they've always said that it's a baby chair. So yeah. Oh, look, gorgeous patchwork thing. So another, this would have been one of the children's bedrooms, I suppose. It's got a nice woven mat on the floor. Other than that, all the furniture would have been imported. So that's the size of the house little shingle roof which has been re redone and then stepping outside oh that looks like a good ice cream <laughs> look at the beautiful gardens out here really amazing looks like they're all replanting everything are you having a picnic something <laughs> just an ice cream <laughs> i don't know if the original furniture or not jp um Probably, probably not because the house has been completely restored. Yeah. But imagine, like, if we sit down here, look at the view. Yeah. So we walked up on this side where the cows are through there. And, yeah, this is the most beautiful, beautiful, beautiful area and all these rock gardens and staircases here. And then we can almost see sky tower through this way not quite i'm going to take you around and show you the little room on the side because this is interesting as well yeah it's just so beautifully um, presented and restored as you can see lots of people walk and run through here lots more birds so there was no kitchen or bathroom so they would have done all of that separately and there's this little room's been, been um, a lot of information's been put in here. I imagine this was his office. He says it was a grand house. A grand house. <laughs> that modest little cottage was quite a grand house, yeah. Amazing. Oh, yeah, so the wood came from Whangaroa. Timber from afar. Timber was not available in Auckland. He had to charter a small schooner to go to Northland. Yeah. Here they are outside the cottage in 1883. Junk food, junkie. How's it going? Nice to see you popping in. Wow, that's fantastic. Yeah. So there they are. That's what they looked like in 1883, which I can tell you is the year that Auckland University was established. After my university walk this morning, we, I discovered it was founded in 1883 with 95 students and four tutors. I'm great. Um, the original building was the old jail and courthouse, and they, that's, that was the beginning of Auckland University. This was the condition it was in um, when they decided to restore it. So that was, 
and I think that was around the 1920s or yeah maybe um, yeah but that's the condition it was in <laughs> great history yeah and it's lovely that we've got these and you can see there's a newish building behind there as well so yeah it was just, just sat tucked away but just I suppose like squatters were in there or something so yeah so the original floor plan So unlikely an architect was involved. <laughs> yeah, typical colonial cottage in New Zealand. My um, great grandparents lived in something very, very similar as well. So, but hey, the floor had collapsed. We knocked it down. <laughs> it was terrible. We knocked it down, but there was nothing to save really. <laughs> Here's the original letter that he wrote. Um, I think this is. Uh, no, this is written to the local newspaper. I thought it was written to his father. But, um, yeah, the writing in the old days. Pen and ink. No, that's it. They were, yeah, they were quite fragile, quite temporary. And that's why a lot of the early Maori buildings um, didn't survive, because they were never built to last. The original wood, yeah. It's amazing. I mean, we can't, you can't buy this wood now unless it's recycled. Yeah. Yeah. So that's it. We're outside again. I'm trying to get you a shot of Sky Tower because it is just through here, but I can't see it. Evan, fantastic. Thank you so much. Whoa. September the 11th, your birthday. Wow. We'll have to remember that. We'll have to remember. <laughs> Where am I? Yeah, it's gorgeous and green. There I am. Oh no, whoa, it's a bit, bit touchy today. There I am. <laughs> Just thought I'd say hello and thank you. We've always got a breeze in New Zealand, so I'm always having to do something with my hair. But thank you so much for joining me for this walk. I'm going to um, say goodbye. Patricia, awesome. I'm going to say goodbye and we're going to finish. I'm just going to do a little 360 from here. So we've got the house, Acacia Cottage. We've got the bistro. We've got Huya Lodge. And you can see the back part of it where they have the information. Oh, thanks, Marcia. That's awesome. Bye, Vanita. Always fabulous to see everybody. Yeah, the Tui's go mad in these trees here. Yeah. Oh, thanks, JP. Wow. Lots of love from New Zealand, too. Thank you. See all the birds? Wow, amazing. But I am going to finish just looking at the little cottage. <laughs> and this was my little friend there. <laughs> the whole time followed me around. Very cute. You can just see her there. <laughs> okay, everybody. Thanks so much. And um, I will actually, do you know what? I reckon we've got a better view because uh, we haven't really looked at it from the front. So let me climb down here. <laughs> Always looking for the great finishing shot. Let's finish. Whee! Blinky Bill, how's it going? Well, thanks, Karen. Oh, yeah, we're sort of like, it's pretty... Yeah, we're a little bit hilly. It's good. Well, I'm down in these gorgeous gardens now, look. And I'm going to turn around. Oh, and here's the cottage from the front. So that's it. <laughs> good timing, absolutely. We'll try and get a little bit of these, the rocks in as well. How's that? All the steps and the gorgeous parts of the garden here that go yeah go up here yeah thanks everybody thanks so much for joining me always fantastic to see you I will catch you all later thanks a lot okay bye for now thank you have a great Thursday I'm so confused with the days at the moment but Thursday works okay thanks everybody take care